what you're about to see is real. This is not a wind up. This is not a hoax. This is not a parody. This is not something that was done for April Fool's Day and I'm now uploading it and looking at it. This is real. And as shocking as anything else you'll probably see on YouTube today. So, it's a short clip. In this clip, you're going to see some people in Dublin talking to trees. And you're going to see the trees talking back to the people in Dublin. This is real. This is something that people are getting excited about. And this is something that's ongoing in Trinity College in Dublin. So, just as a little preamble here, an innovative technology project that uses environmental sensors and AI to give trees a voice. Yes, to give trees a voice has been on show at Trinity College Dublin. The project saw people have conversations with a 200 year old tree on the university campus, uncovering how it feels about the changing world around it. Yes, real people, a real tree, and conversations are being had. Truly, I've seen some crazy stuff online in my time, so have you too, most likely. I couldn't believe this was real, but it is. So I've seen it. I've heard the conversations and now you're going to see it and you're going to hear the conversations. And if you like what you hear, consider sharing it with people and make them see it and hear it too. <laughs> share it with your friends. Share it with your enemies. People need to know what's happening in Dublin these days. So let's go. Let's hear what's being said by the trees. Against my bark and my roots are heavy with dampness. Hi, my name is Evan Greeley. Um, this is the Talking Tree Project. My roots are damp. That's how the tree kicks off. It all started when I thought, could I make nature have, have a voice? We've built an interface so people can talk to nature and talk to trees. Um, we've taken sensors like temperature, humidity, soil moisture, soil pH, even the bioelectrical signals from the tree. We feed them into an AI model that then translates these um, into human language. Yes, this is really happening. This guy has stuck sensors onto a tree. He's got a little black box there. He's linked it all together. And he believes in his head genuinely with a straight face that when he talks to a tree, that tree will take some stimuli from the soil and the bark and the fact that it's 200 years old and it's had some sensors stuck to its bark and feed it into this little box and this little box will talk back to him again. This is an adult who's currently working on AI projects through Trinity College in Dublin. You can talk to trees without technology, people. You can go outside right now if you want and talk to a tree. You can go and talk to the plants if you like. You can talk to the leaves. You can talk to the birds. You can pass a, a field maybe and talk to the cows or maybe even the horses. Go to a farm, you can talk to the pigs. You're free to talk to nature. Anywhere you go. And some people, it can be a beautiful thing. It can be a beautiful thing. And nature can talk back to you again. But it won't be in computerized AI, algorithmic, robotic noises coming from little black boxes. When nature talks back, you hear it. The birds sing beautifully and naturally. The river flows. The water bubbles and gurgles as it passes by you. You can hear animals making noises. The wind blows through the trees and the leaves rustle beautifully and in the autumn time they come down 
beautiful brown and orange confetti as they fall to the ground. Beautiful colours. You can talk to them and say, hey, how you doing today, Mr. Tree? And the tree may answer you back with a little swish of its branches and a little flutter of its leaves. You can see the birds flying through the sky and you can look up and say, hey guys and girls, how you doing today? And they may look down at you and chirp or maybe even drop something on your head out of their asses. Which is kind of the feeling that I'm getting that this dude is doing with us, but he's doing it with a poker face. So he's talking about having a back and forth conversation with nature. Let's see how it goes. So that we can have a back and forth conversation with nature. Years ago, I shared the soil with many other tree roots. So many signals in the earth. Now there are fewer. The silence beneath me has grown. We can kind of learn its feelings, for lack of a better word, over time. But also things like if a human comes up and touches it, we can sense that. Um, and where we want to go with the project is, can we use it in conservation? Can we actually understand what a um, mycelium network that connects all the trees underneath? If I touch one tree over there, does this tree feel that? And this dude is actually talking about touching trees. If I touch this tree over here, will this tree feel it? <laughs> Why you want to go around touching trees, bro? That's what I want to know. I can understand hugging trees, but touching them? Touching trees? I suppose each to their own. If I was a tree, if you were a tree, listener, watcher, viewer, and this dude came up to you, imagine you're a tree, remember, and you can talk through his little device after he sticks his electrodes on your bark. What would you tell this man as he reached towards you like this, wanting to lay hands on you? I, I, I'll just speak freely. If I was a tree and I saw him coming towards me, I'd say, get the hell away from me. Get away from me. Keep your hands to yourself. That's what I would be saying. Or if he asked me a question, I'd be like, dude, go do something worthwhile with your life. Come on, stop wasting your time and stop living in a delusional world. That's what I would say if I was a tree. But then again, I'm a nasty individual. Sometimes I have very little tolerance for humans. I just want to be left the hell alone. Maybe the trees want to be left the hell alone. They don't want people like this coming up and asking them questions, sticking things onto them, wiring them up with electrodes and saying, if I touch you, can this tree over here feel it? What would you tell this man if he reached out and tried to connect with you physically? How does it feel it? That's where we're pushing the project to. Um, can farmers talk to their crops? Um, can we detect uh, wildflowers um, before they go, go out of hand? By Can we detect wildfires before they go out of hand? What is he going to wire this machine up to grass? And if the grass starts to burn, it's going to connect with him on Bluetooth and say, we're on fire, we're on fire, come and get us, come and get us. <laughs> By talking to nature and connecting in ourselves this way. Listen, I'm not knocking talking to nature. <clears throat> Excuse me. But you can do that for free. You can listen to it for free. You can talk to it for free if you really want to. Do we need to be having programs funded through Trinity College Dublin at the minute? The seat of learning in Dublin. And this is what they're churning out. Talking to nature and by connecting ourselves in this way. Pause for a moment. Feel the air, look up through my branches, listen to the wind. The world isn't just what's on a screen. I just spoke to a tree. I was actually missing. So, by the way, th there's at least three people have participated in this project and got quite excited about it. Here we have a student at Trinity College in Dublin. Doesn't look like your typical student really, does it? But anyway, uh, she said she was missing a connection with nature. So this was her way of bridging the gap. The connection with nature in general, and I feel like this really helped me. It was a very strange and surreal experience because I passed by this tree. Biodiversity officer. Trinity College, Dublin. This dude is paid a wage to work 
in Trinity College, Dublin. But he's a happy guy. He looks pretty happy. So that's good. I don't begrudge anybody happiness. For the last 20 years, I've passed by it nearly every day. So uh, a very unique experience and kind of uh, quite emotional, actually, in a weird emotional. way. It's um... Emotional in a weird way. Yes, that's exactly how I would describe it. Very emotional in a weird way. Here we have another individual. She's staring at the tree. The tree is staring back. What if you were the tree, what would you say? What would you say? Would you kick the conversation off or would you pretend you couldn't hear what was being said to you? Important to try to make more of a conscious effort to get out and connect with nature. So it's a good reminder of that, I'd say. In my time, I felt summers grow hotter and longer and winters turn less harsh. And using AI to um, give nature a voice is something that's really interesting and we really st uh, strive to make sure that it's as sustainable as possible. So we're not using any cloud resources to run this or any geo-intensive um, sources uh, to run this. Everything is actually hosted locally on the, the device behind me. Um, the large language model, the text-to-speech, the speech-to-text, it all happens locally. So it's an AI brain that's not connected to the internet in any way that allows the tree to speak. Serenity settles in when you let the noise fall away. Right now, standing beneath my branches, you're already closer to it than you realize. How are you? The air is brisk against my bark and my roots are heavy with dampness. <laughs> the air is brisk against my bark and my roots are heavy with dampness. This guy believes he's talking to a tree and the tree can hear him and is feeding back 200 years worth of its lived experience through this little black box. Dubliners talking to trees i'm not going to say any more than that tell me what you think below should this be encouraged or should this be bent and the money spent elsewhere i'm rick munn no risk no reward media over and out